Hello and welcome to Season 2. Hello and welcome, I messed that up a little bit, to Episode 2, Season 2. Today, I've got Palador, and joining me is also Sneaky Evil, who's going to demo his brand new replay viewer. And we're going to talk with Palador at the end of Season 1, all the things that we've accomplished, all the things that he's accomplished, and everything that we can look forward to in the future for VRML. Season 2 tomorrow. Yeah, season two tomorrow. We all look forward to that, but we know it's not going to come. But we have some great stuff oh. from <laughs> Sneaky Evil, who's been showing off, well, who wants to show off his brand new replay viewer, who's been working alongside Zenith, the ZZ Zenith you can see in the chat. So And Delusion. And who else? Delusion. And Delusion. Delusion has been working right? with him as well. Delusion is a long-time Echo Arena player. So he's come back to the community. The audio is bad. Now maybe you're using the. Uh, so usually I can't always tell because it goes into these headphones, which mic's good. Headphones are just kind of iffy. Maybe it's uh, it's feeding into the wrong mic or something. I'm not sure. Hmm, it should be fine. either or. How bad is my audio? It's all right. Audio out of ten. All right, fine. Sounds like I'm talking into a fan. What if you stack without audio issues? 10 out of 10, I totally agree on that. <laughs> so let me... Ender, Ender is so toxic. How about with rice? Still? Uh, 9 out of 10 with rice. It's very bad. All right, guess we, gotta, guess we gotta vote you off whoa, the whoa. island, Sputnik. <laughs> I don't, it's oh. not the stack without audio issues every time. Which island? The nest or uh, the stack? Of islands. The stack. Stack isn't an island, or is it? That's not an island. No, it's not an island. It's a pressure, but it should be better now. By the way, <laughs> at least seven out of ten. Well, we're gonna continue forward. I want to show you what Sneaky Evil has done alongside Zenith and Delusion. So we're gonna cut quickly our partial screen so we can start this off right the evil Zenith Delusion created this fantastic replay viewer you can access it online it uses Unity and WebGL do you want to talk about it before I show it off yeah sure so the ultimate goal is we want to have a system where you can play a game while something's running and it'll save the game to a file you upload it and then you can watch it on the web without having to deal with any like OBS or recording software because some people can't handle that. And since the game doesn't have a native replay viewer, it's always nice to, you know, have something that like allows you to rewatch your videos or rewatch re your VODs and also like analyze your own gameplay to get better. Like that was the ultimate goal. It's for a team to get better and see, hey, what could I have done here instead of this without only having the VRML stream to go by. Definitely. So we show off. You can see it in the partial screen. While I fix my audio real quickly. Oh yeah, I'm turning it on. So you you definitely you sound different in the stream than you do in my headphones. Uh, it's coming across as a bit staticky. Like you sound fine in my ear. It's just on the stream end of things. So maybe it's a CPU thing or I don't know. Something I can on just, the, the stream I can just end. put it in the chat if everyone wants to go to it. Like it's public. It's a pretty awesome put, tool, though, I will say, for can sure. I just, can I just put it in the chat? Yeah, feel free to put it in the chat. <clears throat> I might get banned for this. I didn't get banned. Nice. Oh, so God. Cut back. Oh. The right. server's getting mad hit. It's you like messed up. <laughs> five people just got it. Ah. Yeah, I think it's uh, lagging That's a little it. bit. It's really cool. The console is literally blowing up. And as we speak, Sneaky Evil is hacking into your computers. Correct. One by one. Oh, hey, Dollar. What's up, Dollar? And everyone else for that matter. Bendy Niles, C. Jason, Zenith, and of course, the visionary, Ender. So we're going to cut Ender directly to my direct audio. 
So that should sound better. Uh, hopefully. 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 So you know, it's not a it's not a stream without audio issues, but it's it should be fixed now. It, it's it's better. Sounds good now. So you know, we've got we've got this awesome replay viewer. Let me cut back to it. So as we look at this, we see Frozen Snowman. He's guarding the goal. But you know, why did you feel a need to create this replay viewer? All right. So like, I mean, you can imagine like you have. Let's put let's like there's two use cases, right? You're playing in pubs and you want to analyze your own gameplay. The only thing you have in pubs currently is OBS, like recording your own gameplay. And that's only gonna give you that one sided perspective from your camera. And what we wanted to do is have an ability where you can free cam around, you can draw, um, you can like think about your own gameplay from a like a full idea of the whole game instead of what just your camera is showing. And then in terms of like VRML gameplay for teams and stuff. The VRML stream doesn't always show everything. The cameraman doesn't always get everything, especially if it's a one-man camera streamer job. It's really hard to cast and cam at the same time. I feel called out. Well, it is hard. I know it's hard. No, yeah. It's um, So, yeah, I, I, I like the idea of having a free cam and also be able, being able to draw on it, and like especially if you're doing team VOD review in, a, in like a video call with screen share, you can draw on it and talk about what you were supposed to do here versus what you did and how that affected your gameplay. Definitely. And it's, you know, these are great tools to use for the future. Like you, you can't underestimate the strength of these tools for the future of echo arena. It's, it really allows us to, to show these newer players what they can do to improve, how they can improve their game, how they can, you know, it's it just everything. So how, how will this be used in private matches? How can a user use this in a private match? So, yeah, you can, in, in private matches, like, if you're just trying to work on your individual skill, you can point out separate times where, like, you know, I have a hard time clearing. If I'm, like, let's say I'm a goalie, like, I have a hard time getting a clear after a save. Mm -hmm. You can remember when those moments are, and you go back in the VOD, you look at, hey, I was in this situation. Um, where was the enemy team? There's a guy left tunnel, there's a guy right tunnel. Should have cleared top mid. But what did I actually do? I probably cleared left side, got it intercepted. So it's those moments of reflection where you find, like, moments of errors and what you could improve on the next time and that's the ultimate goal for it so how did you come up with this idea um so we had i saw in it was actually based on ql young's repo of um he had a recorder and a, like a 2d replayer mm -hmm. um and his recorder i based my recorder off of that and then i was working with zen and then i was like and zen was working on some other unity projects with the echo arena model and stuff and at that time, I was like, hey, we can make a replay viewer and replay these files that QL, QL's recorder is making. And so, like, that's kind of what it was based off of. And then it was started with a lot of, like, early, early kind of sketchy, like, messed up versions that really looked terrible. And you saw, like, weeks and weeks of refining and making sure everything looks as close to the game as it can. And we're not even done. Like, if you go back, there's no goalie blocks and there's no, like, there's still some missing effects and stuff and there's no sound yet. And that's all going to come with time. Well, let me cut back to it. Now, let me try and get one of those early versions of the of it, because it looked really funny. Let's see. What can I find? <laughs> Still campaigning for, like, a Paper Mario version of that or something, where it's uh, super, super 2D and basic, but... Right. We need, like, a stylized version. Or I was telling you the other day, they should turn this into, like, NBA 2K style game, just totally, uh, totally make it a, a mobile Echo Arena. That'd be sick. I'd love to play that in the future. All right, here. I don't know. Oh, I'm on the wrong computer. <laughs> if I, d uh, Sput, do you have Discord open? Yeah, I do have Discord open. I can, I'm gonna send you. Or I'm gonna put it in, in the group chat. I don't know if you can show that. That's what it used to look like way back. Um, so it's like a lot of refinement and especially like. The basics, graphics, and stuff all kind of came together. And a lot of a teamwork, finding people for the right job. Like, Delusion was really nice in terms of doing all the modeling and rigging and all that. And also, at the same time, teaching us how to do it so we can pass that on. And, um, yeah, because you got to find the right people for the right, like, jobs. Definitely. And Zenith and I are still... Zenith and I are both young developers. Like, we aren't as skilled as, like, 
the professionals are. Like there's a lot of professional devs in the community and you're always like outmatched by someone. So you gotta find the people that can help you in the right situations. So we're gonna cut to your early model. Maximize it. Does this have audio? No, right. or it shouldn't. Definitely issues with scale. Right. But I mean, yeah, this is an early prototype and you can see how far you've come. And I mean, everything starts with a prototype. Everything starts with something. And it's really impressive. I, I think that proves that the disc is, in fact, a ball. It, <laughs> right. That's how I first scaled it. That's, that was the first thing <laughs> I did, was getting the disc. I mean, it, I can't wait to see how this tool is used in the future. You know, you present this to new teams. And they, really, they can really make use of this tool. This is going to allow them to change their game so rapidly, adjust rapidly, and really advance their game unlike anything before you know before we had to scram we had to take take our own vods we had to look through them this can break everything down and increase the speed and you can just get your information from it as quickly as you want right so we've got this great tool now you know this comes at the tail end of well, not the tail end it comes after the complete end of season one but you know palador you've you accomplished what you wanted we finished season one how do you feel about that Though we did, spot we did, but you know we, uh, yeah, feeling uh, feeling good. It was it was a good season, went well, exceeded expectations in, in some uh, some regards. There, just in terms of how fast I think towards the end, uh, largely thanks to Quest, of course, the Quest beta and alphas coming out. Uh, it really did contribute huge to the growth of the game. But yeah, uh, it was it was a satisfying season. I did need. Well, I think a lot of us too needed you know a little break after that, but I'm good and ready to go again. I got my week's worth of hibernation in, catching up on sleep and all that good stuff. Uh, but as I was touching on a little bit before the stream went live, even uh, I'm ready to get back. The um, casting and all that stuff keeps me on schedule, so you know keeps me waking up at the same time. So I, I miss it. We do have, of course, uh, Seal, the the Summer Echo League Arena League, uh, <laughs> doing tournaments this weekend, but. I'll be casting some, uh, at least some of those games, but you know we need us some VR ML quite soon. That's this weekend. Does it start this weekend? I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know that this weekend. <laughs> oh. Now I do. So, <laughs> well, there you go. So, how long is uh, Summer Echo Arena League supposed to last? Uh, it's just it's for the weekend. It's uh, essentially a two-day tournament there. Oh, I thought it was like a yeah cup 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 style. I thought it was like a few weeks. I. I haven't been reading anything about it, but I mean, I look forward to the Summer Echo Arena League. It's going to be a, a great event, and it, you know, it's a it's a yeah. great showcase of what this community can do. So yeah, absolutely. And as we go to the next topic, you know, what surprised you the most from season one? Like, who, what stood out to you? What What do you think? You know, was one of the greatest aspects of it? Uh, well, just in terms of like memorable moments, we got uh, there's a lot of them, but I think things like um, the hype trains, those were always memorable. Those were uh, fun. I mentioned again the increased numbers and viewership we got the, uh, there, and then for some of the master tier uh, matches, we got the hype trains going that last month, especially. We had uh, Challengers Cup, uh, that was super memorable uh, because of Instinct and Wireless Jacks. They had those were one of my highlights uh, for the Challengers Cup and going, you know, into the, the post post regular season. That was fun to watch. Uh, those teams making a run for the the gold and the master tier uh, teams as well. Instinct, of course, making it all the way to the uh, actual championships or the finals on the the final weekend. So that was that was a memorable moment. Uh, another one, Galaxy Team Galaxy. Final month uh, for them was really fun to watch. They were one of the, t the teams that you know, I followed and casted a lot uh, throughout the season, kind of new to competitive play. And uh, so that's kind of another one of the highlights for me. I just I had written down a bit because, uh, yeah, they went 0-15 uh, for the first two and a half months or so. And then they won five of their last nine matches. That's an incredible turnaround uh, for a roster that stayed pretty much the same. They just got better each week. And even going into the second month, you can see the improvement. They couldn't quite complete some of the wins, even though they were close. And then the final uh, four weeks, five weeks or so, five of nine. And even in the Challengers Cup, uh, they, they, they took some rounds off of uh, the you know, top-level teams there. So uh, three different points of, I guess, positive memories. 
And then, of course, going to the postseason, way too many to really list all at once. But there was a lot of a lot of playoff and championship stuff that was uh, highlight worthy. Infinite Joker was really good. The was that that was um was that semifinals or was that qualifiers? That uh, that was the qualifier cup, the right the round round robins uh, that happened yeah. the week before. Yeah, that was an amazing. I still one of the few matches that really left me at, after a point just kind of speechless in terms. You know, I couldn't. It was hard to put into words what I had seen there, just from the defense of uh, Infinite, especially um, all time highlight reel. Just that that match alone, I think. Absolutely, that was an excellent match. I remember when you guys came back into the Casters Channel. I had been casting on VRML channel too, and you guys were just ecstatic. You were like in this this nether level. You said that this game was so amazing, and I had to go back and watch it. But you know, so that stuck out to you as the number one moment from season one, Nikki. Yeah, definitely. Just because I also because I got to watch it. Like I didn't get to watch most just because like I was either playing or or I was busy. But getting the time to watch the qualifiers or like after I dropped out it was it was good it was it was it was i i think i said it towards the end of the cast it wasn't so much i wasn't casting it so much as just experiencing life i was experiencing echo that was what you look forward to uh in any any big match situation where there's huge stakes seasons on the line things like that the championship hopes are on the line uh getting matches like those are the ones that just make it all it's like the bill up you're always wondering is this going to be that match of the season is this going to be one of those classics and it was it's definitely something to say for the highlight reel for the future. But as we go to the next topic, you know, are there any numbers, metrics, or like anything that you can talk about that, you know, changed from the preseason to season one or, you know, after the quest users came into the game? Like how did that change the streams itself? Um, I have some of the numbers which people have kind of heard about before a bit and that uh, just kind of an example of the growth. So preseason finals back in uh, December, mid mid December, those were it capped off at around 85, roughly give or take a few, but around 85 viewers on Twitch on VRML one. Uh, by season one, it was towards the we opened up with about that same count, and then towards the end of March or early April, uh, we had 85 viewers. Uh, our season maxed or peaked to that point. Then of course, quests started coming along. Uh, more people start getting, are being aware of Echo and playing Echo. We had just within a week or two of that 85 peak again, we had around 95 or so. Uh, another week or two after that, we peaked out at 109. Then we had the Rookie Cups that had occurred uh, just a week or two after the, the postseason, or after the regular season concluded. That capped off at about 210 uh, total. Then we had the Challenger Cups, the finals qualifiers. Those were all about the mid-100s uh, peak for pretty much the entire streams, championships. Then uh, a couple weeks ago, 220 viewers on Twitch. So again, that was our se uh, season peak. We had another 50 or so on Facebook Live. And although I cannot give you uh, specific numbers, venues did very well. I can say that much. Very well. <laughs> So, very well. So we had a lot of success. Very, season. very, very well. Yeah. So we had a <laughs> we had a lot of success, and you know we can't share the numbers, but we definitely had a lot of success on venues, and we reached a lot of new people. So that's that's how the casting team and you know VRML has changed over the season one. But how did season one change for you, Sneaky Evil, coming from the preseason into season one? How did that? How did your team feel, and how did you know? How did you feel as a player? Yeah. So. You know, I've been with Orbit for the past two seasons. Um, going into preseason, we weren't in much of a name at all. You know, like we played a couple weeks of uh, VRL, and I think we played maybe a cup or two. I don't even remember. It was way back, and we came into pre we came into preseason with minimal scrimming, and you know, definitely we weren't confident as as confident as we were going into season one. And you know, we kind of we showed up to the plate in preseason. I think. A lot of people weren't ready for like what this like group of, group of like like high school age teenagers were able to pull off in in the preseason, and we went from being at like the bottom of the standings to placing fourth at the end of the season. So I mean, preseason was one of our definitely the highlight for me of of Orbit, and you know it was so it was so rewarding to go from the bottom and work really hard to get all the way to where we were. 
and then going into season one, it was uh, it was not more. It was it was more like fighting for what we had versus trying to get something new, because already at that point everyone said you know Orbit doesn't deserve to be there, just because of the circumstances of what we got and how we kind of pulled off the the run to championships in in preseason. So going into season one, I I, I was definitely nervous about keeping our stance in the stand like in the standings and making sure that we were able to beat the people at least people below us and have a run on the people above us and you know flair came out of nowhere um instinct came out of nowhere milk came out of nowhere we lost to a few teams that we probably shouldn't have in just numerically and it all started to kind of go downhill after we lost blenders because of cable issues we had to pull in altered who wasn't he, he wasn't always ready to play echo just because he wasn't, he didn't play Echo like casually much anymore, and you know we didn't have much time to practice, much time to scrim with Altered. We kind of pulled Altered in officially like two weeks before uh, qualifiers. So losing Blenders was kind of a lost cause for us. And then um, obviously having to play the top teams in the nation to qualify for championships and closed quals was really difficult with a like the totally new roster. So yeah. A difficult change. I mean, everyone, everyone never expected Orbit to have the success that they did in the preseason, or the success that they had in the. Well, we saw what you did in the preseason, so we knew that you were going to do great things in season one. But you know, just coming out of nowhere, surprising everyone, Blender, Zenith, Sneaky Evil, Altered Droid, Altered Droid. Even though he wasn't, you know, the main player, he still had a very impressive performance. But I can only yeah, imagine yeah. how difficult the adjustment was for your team. Yeah, and one of the one of the hard parts of it was, you know, losing blenders. We had to put someone new in the back line, and that was kind of like our entire play style was based off that that foundation of the back line. We knew we could play around it, and having scoop was like a whole different mindset in the back line. Like me as a player, I always knew where I could slap it just in case because I knew blenders would be there, and scoop played just enough different that it wasn't the same. And it was it was a lot of adjusting too late when it was, you know, we had it to be consistent for championships. Well, are you going to stay together for season two? As, can you comment on oh, that? Oh, no. <laughs> no, we already, it's it's oh, already, no. yeah, no. It, it wasn't, I, don't, I didn't think, I think we all agreed on the team that, like, we kind of plateaued, and some of our focus was divided in other places when we needed to be in the game. So I know we're definitely, like, separating, but I know a lot of us already have, some pretty good features for the next season. So definitely, and so you'll see us. Too, we'll be back. Like that's a that's the awesome part I think about a lot of teams, uh, both in preseason, uh, preseason extending to season one. There, there were so many teams like Orbit, uh, and like like you mentioned, some of them too. Milk, um, you know, Instinct, uh, Wireless Jacks as well. There's so many teams who came out of nowhere. I feel like over time, uh, at, at every division, but especially those uh, silver, high silver, and then the gold areas. I mean who one year ago they they weren't they weren't touching anywhere near those you know top level areas i mean it was pretty much dominated by you know the same handful of teams for a while there when it was 3v3 and you know vrl and things like that of course the one year anniversary of uh the finals of uh season three of vrl was yesterday so i was kind of thinking on it a bit and just, so much has changed in one year so much you know teams like like Orbit and teams like uh, like Illuminati who won the preseason, you know, a uh, Joker who just won their first championship. I mean, there's a lot of uh, it's kind of the rise of the new generation. I feel like in Echo, absolutely, and you know, it kind of sucks for us, but you know, we've kind of stepped away from playing and we're watching all the younger players find you know a lot of success competitively, and they're really changing their game, developing their game, and becoming these. These incredibly strong players, uh, Sneaky Evil, who, you know, a year ago was, you know, lesser known player, and now he's he's at the top with all the rest of them. So it's you know big changes, and we talked about team dynamism at the end of the preseason, and, and that really is a strength. You know, it changes everything up, it keeps everything fresh and entertaining. So, for sure. So going into season two, as a caster and as a producer and as you know the representative of VRML that we speak to, what, what do you want to see in season two? What, do you, what expectations do you have? Um, 
too many to list. I mean, the, the main plan hasn't really changed since preseason. Since before preseason, it was always, you know, we're going to use the the time and the passion, the skill set that we have as players who've been playing for a long time, and we're going to try and drive it you know, forward in a way that supports and features a lot more of the community and integrates them in ways that we just couldn't see before. And that's kind of the same thing here. Uh, the thing is, with season two, we have... I just did a rough count, and I mentioned this to some people over the last week, but I did a rough count of just the new teams alone uh, since the regular season concluded from season one. Uh, so among teams with at least at least three or more players on the roster, so I'm kind of you know assuming that they'll fill out that fourth slot. So three more players. We have uh, somewhere in the area of 55 to 60 new teams with at least three players on it since conclusion. In other words... More than doubling up what we had in season one in in uh, in the world, where we had give or take forty three ish, maybe forty four active teams at our peak in season one. Uh, so, I mean, upwards of a hundred new team or hundred teams total potentially next season, which is ridiculous. So, I mean, I think that sets uh, sets expectations in itself. Just being able to continue to cast. You know, uh, feature as many as we can and continue building the league, continue building viewership. I know these are all kind of, you know, generic answers, but uh, it's just it's all part of the, the whole grand plan. It's just that uh, we're not changing significantly uh, our main ideas and direction. It's just more so uh, season one basically was how do you it was showing that we can. We can execute, essentially, I think season, season two is about showing that we can. Uh, scale and that we can maintain essentially so that's that's what i'm looking forward to and uh yeah that w it will be coming soon by the way i know people keep asking about it uh it won't be months can't give you a specific but you'll know some specifics rather soon so won't be months more more like weeks until you get things going don't worry well we look forward to it and so that's the casters and administrative perspective now, how does how does season two look for you, Sneaky Evil? What are you what are you looking forward to? Um, so I mean, going to season two, I'm almost set. I'm not entirely sure exactly what I'm gonna do yet. Um, so I've been playing with a new roster. Um, it, it feels it's weird feeling with a new team. It's definitely a new experience because, you know, I've been with Orbit for six months now. So oh no, like eight months. So playing with a new team is completely different, and it's not even like a couple new players. It's an entire new roster with a whole new play style. So it's definitely something new and we are kind of growing out of it right now. But I think the future is pretty strong and I think we're definitely going to be this definitely better than Orbit is the goal. I think that will happen very quickly. The players on this team are pretty dedicated. Um, so yeah, and but then some of the new rosters that are coming out of this huge roster swap between season one and season two is they're pretty nuts like um new joker is nutty as well as um some of the newer rosters that are just made up of the fallen teams of all the free agents they're pretty crazy rox's team is good um and yeah the, the that group is really good as well as joker right now kang staying kang's gonna be really good infinite's gonna be good like it's just a bunch of really good teams that are just gonna keep progressing so it, you got to either ride the wave or you're going to fall off. So it's it's hard. That's one of the great things about this game is that it's constantly changing and you have to stay on it or you're going to fall off the wagon. So, you know, that's what everyone looks forward to in season two. And we have a lot of expectations and we're going to have a lot of challenges adjusting to the new scale as players, as casters, as, as uh, you know, everybody. So it's going to be a huge change for us and we're definitely looking forward to it. But I want to talk about all the skills and talents that everyone has developed over the past few years. You know, we have all these projects. You know, Palador has transformed the VRML package. You know, he developed all these skills in graphic design. How, did you have those skills before, before you did any of this? Or did you just find them through practice and use? It's, it's all... It's all learn as we go. It's pretty much same thing with casting, really, and same thing with video editing. Uh, pretty much all these different things about uh, you know myself and and my just uh, I guess abilities is just it's it's stuff I'm kind of 
learning as I go. Uh, didn't have them too much before Echo Arena. I mean, you know, in, in, uh, in terms of like, like pros, uh, I'm pretty much on, on budget stuff too. You know, uh, instead of Photoshop, I use GIMP. And instead of uh, Premiere, I'm using Vegas. You know, got that Humble Bundle for 20 bucks a couple of years back. I mean, uh, it, casting as, as well, just I'm, I'm really learning, learning as I go along so far. Uh, but it is something I enjoy, the, the whole creative process. It, it, it's, it's fun. And I think, it, you know, that includes any kind of programming as well, development. I mean, I'm sure, you know, uh, Sneaky and Zenith and, and Delusion can, can uh, verify just the whole process or uh, kind of having a vision, bringing it to fruition. And then there's a point, too, where you start every time you think you're almost done with something, at least for me, uh, there's 10 other ideas that come to mind. I'm like, oh, wait, I got to add one more thing, one more thing. And then about 522 iterations later, I finally have something I might want to put out there. I, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much my process. So like for the cast, the stuff you saw on the pre-show scenes for the finals, for instance, I wish I had more time to do that because that's probably only iteration, you know, 50 instead of 500. I don't know. It was it, that one was more quickly put together, but that's that's the thing. I too I get really focused on executing something, and then uh, it, until it's exactly what I want it to be, or at least close enough. I just I tunnel vision pretty hard, which is also why I like casting better than video making, for instance, because it forces me to not edit myself too much. But anyways, yes, to answer your question in a very roundabout way. Learn as I go. <laughs> well, I mean, you've done a lot. You've really transformed the VRML package to our own. It's it, it completely transformed over the season, over the preseason, and it really is an impressive, you know, visual tool, vi visual elements. They're all they're all very impressive. But you know, that's what you've created during your time with the VRML. But Sneaky Evil, you've developed your skills as a programmer with, you know, the replay creator, or the replay viewer. And how has how has the past year changed for you as you've created this tool, or the past few months as you've created this tool? Yeah, I've always been a hobby programmer, and um, so, like, developing my skills in that, I've always been more of a script or competitive programmer for school and stuff, because I would always compete every year. Same competition as Zenith, by the way, so we, we probably saw each other without even knowing last year, but um, so, like, going into this, it, it, only, it only honed my skills even further, especially working with Unity, something I, don't, I haven't worked with before. Um, but something Zen has worked with, it allowed us to collaborate and also share our abilities. Because I know Zen is kind of is less strong on the hard programming skills and more strong with Unity and its components. And I was really strong with hard coding and less of Unity. So it brought us together even closer than we were just on Orbit. And I think that's one of the cool parts about the programming in in my experience was finding a new community within Echo, like the API chat. And all the people in there, really helpful, like QL, um, I blow at sports and delusion, all of them, they're all really cool people. And finding them through programming was like an experience that really helped me because they were able to show me things that I didn't know about in specifics. And, you know, a lot of them are professional programmers or professional developers that know what they're talking about more than I ever will. So it's cool to talk to them and get to know more about what I always love to do. Now I'm trying to find that Macarena video that you guys made. <laughs> oh, I got it. Oh, yeah. Let, let me link that. Me. Link that to me it. so I can show everybody. Uh, well, I always link that too. Just I want to make sure on that note because, you know, for what I have been doing on the asset end of things, it's it, it is definitely not just uh, just me, you know, contributing to the overall efforts. Of course, so you do have projects uh, like the replay viewer uh, from Sneaky and Zenith. There, you you have Ignite's bot, which is amazing. We were able to integrate that into the the final week of gameplay. Uh, to get more accurate stat readings and things like that. Uh, you know, a sealable bag with the uh, Echo VR stream buddy to show the stats on the Twitch video player and so much for subtlety as well working on that. You know, you had Atlas as well for joining matches and I know uh, Skinny is currently working as well uh, on a, a new, forgot what the name is off the top of my head now. Australia. Maybe sneaky. There you go. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So there's like, there's so many amazing tools from the community that all add to like the whole package that is just the competitive scene basically yeah everyone's creating that's what's so great about this community everyone creates they try and better the game they try and show off their work and 
you know, it really is a creative community. We're all doing something outside of the game, or we're all doing something to benefit the game. And it really, you know, it can't be understated the value of all of this activity. So let's cut to this beautiful video <laughs> made by Zenith. Yes. Art. It is art. It is art. <laughs> so we're going to start it. Experience, I'm telling you, I don't know how, but <laughs> no, no Zen. Too good. Zen. <laughs> oh my god, Zen got deleted. Right. So we'll cut back to the Autobot. I mean, see, Jason's the one. He's my moderator. So I, <laughs> I hope see Jason. Oh, is he get, Is Zenith trying to get people to like it? I mean, it's a great video. Looks Everyone like should it. like it. There you go. So, I mean, this is some of the great content that we've all cre created. I mean, it's just a joke video, but it's still a great video nonetheless. You were able to use the, the existing skeletons in those models, correct? That's that's our replay viewer. We just <laughs> we just did it in the replay viewer. <laughs> it's still impressive, uh, and it's definitely funny. You got uh, you got praised by the developers at Rad, so and they loved it. And it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, that joke. Kind of I, I got it's no jokes, but Nick. It, it's it's <laughs> that is peak echo. I'm telling you. I got this passed around the office. Strife. Apparently, <laughs> what was that? Zen uh, excuse me, Z sneaky. It got passed around the rat office. Apparently, within with amongst the devs. So, um, it got somewhere. Yeah, I mean, they loved it. The community loves it, and I mean, Zen says, "Ah, uh, uh, yes, quality content." But it's really great stuff. <laughs> and you know, this is the stuff that we create. This is all the great stuff that we're doing. You know, these are the things that we're passionate about. Uh, you know, what are what are you doing outside the game? Since we're, we're not playing the season right now, we're not. We're everyone's scrimming. Everyone's got a little bit more free time, but of course, we're kind of still stuck inside. You know, with the current situation. But you know, what have you been spending time on uh, Palador? What have you been doing when you uh, haven't been focusing on Echo and VRML? Focusing on Echo and VRML. <laughs> That's pretty much it, honestly. I I. I did play again. Had a bit of a hibernation phase just to catch up, like on the, the sleep and you know get everything uh, physically and mentally all in check and kind of clear and ready to go again. Didn't take overly long, but that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when I when I get into something creatively or I care about something a lot, with uh, I just I, I tunnel vision, I hyper focus, and I do nothing but that. So pretty much all my free time where I have energy, it's going into something related to the league, whether it's, you know, assets or some behind the scenes stuff, uh, reaching out, you know, to various, uh, you know, other or, uh, organizations and companies and stuff and just doing all my diligence on that. But that's pretty much where it, where it goes. I haven't been playing like games too much, honestly. Um, yeah, it's just echo. It's just echo. Now, what about, and I'm okay with that. I'm sorry to cut you off, but what about you, sneaky? What have you been doing? Um, lots of programming, like starting with Australia. Australia is the new project Skinny and I are working on. It's like Figgy Atlas plus everything else. Like it's like a really stretch goal, but it's gonna start as like what Atlas was or a what Atlas is plus Figgy with deep linking, which deep linking is like you get one link and everyone can join the game through the link. And Dave, uh, like David N, the lead developer, was talking about implementing that within next few updates which is pretty exciting and we're hoping to use that as like a as a facade to give out deep linking links and then in the like stretch goal of it if we have enough users we want to have our own third party ranked system similar to like face it or esca of the counter-strike world so the goal is to have like full-on private ranked matchmaking which will be like really competitive games hopefully with with 4v4 vrml like rules and stuff which are all tracked with Astrea. But that programming, Unity with um, the replay viewer, and then in real life, um, I'm doing, I'm flying again, thank God. 
my flight school reopened recently. So I actually go on my first flight tomorrow in exactly 12 hours. So That's that'll awesome. be nice again. And then, yeah, I'm going to college starting next semester. So um, starting with flying will be nice again because I get to go back to what I love. <laughs> and getting out of high school gives me time. So is he, Are you an Andy? Yeah, I've seen yeah, Jason, Jason points out. <laughs> we have, we've had two pilots on the show so far. So uh, we definitely have a lot of aviation enthusiasts in the community. Uh, what type of plane will you be flying tomorrow? A Cessna 172. Let's see if I can bring that a little... up. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> a Cessna 172. Whatever it is, I guarantee you it's better than any plane that I've flown, which is to say, I haven't. <laughs> My super you never flown? Personally, like, pilot, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, Otherwise, I've, I've, I've flown plenty. Would have been hard getting to to Leicester otherwise last summer. That is true. Let's see, I can find a photo probably. Oh, I got Hold one on. right here. So we got cut to partial screen, and we'll show you a Cessna 172. I guess they're called the Skyhawks. Yeah, they are. So <laughs> you'll be aloft tomorrow in 12 hours flying this yeah. over the panhandle. So that will be exciting. Uh, Central, Central Florida. Oh, excuse me, Central Florida. I don't know my yeah. Floridian geography, excuse me. <laughs> it's it's the W's that are in the panhandle. Huh. As we cut back. That, that, that's, a, that's a pic from Andy's Instagram right there. <laughs> there's there's a picture if you want to show that. That's me. Yeah, send me the pic as I punch my microphone. Um, no, but aviation is definitely cool. How, how do you feel about flying and its relationship with echo arena do you feel like the same type of exhilaration <laughs> uh, no not really i i've actually been asked that before that's it's really weird um no planes are le much less agile than my echo character will be so there's i like being able to slap around in echo so there's no crossover <laughs> whatsoever no <laughs> but we can you at least go faster right we cut to this as uh if, I mean, you go really fast in Echo if you ever think about it. Oh, you, go, you have true, like, true. let's see, like if you go 40 meters a second. Uh oh, math, I'm nervous. Well, maybe if you become a fighter pilot, you'll you can find that same sense of exhilaration. You're going like 90 miles an hour on Joust. What's the fastest That's you've ever? really fast. What's the fastest you've ever gone on gone in a car? I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> can't or won't. Won't. Okay. <laughs> Will Palador? Self, self yes, incarnation. <laughs> I've gone about 120 miles per hour on a track. I've, I've, I've gone fast in a go kart and almost died. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> true, true story. Visiting my, uh, uh, my, my brother when he was doing basic and went to like a go kart. I forgot what it's called now, thing, but you know, just a little little go kart, whatever. Uh, they went decently fast, not not uh, blazingly, but decently fast. In any case, uh, yeah, we were turning a corner, and he just kept his speed and t boned me. Uh, it was it was like inches away from breaking my arm. I kid you not. And it bent it it bent like the frame of the the cart I was driving too. Uh, it was it was it was lightly entertaining watching the distant panic of like all the spectators and stuff, a uh, family and, and the workers, they came running at, you know, we weren't sure if I had uh, been smashed to pieces or not, but it was, it was, it was, it was good. Well, you, it was fun. That's the fastest I've gone. You're with us. You're okay. <laughs> so I'm thankful for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mostly. But you know, everyone's doing their own thing right now. Everyone's doing things outside of the game. They've got much more free time, but and like I said before, unfortunately, you know, with the COVID situation, we don't have as much freedom as we want. So, you know, go looking forward in the future, everyone's going to be playing a lot more VR. I know I spoke to somebody that said, you know, I'm just waiting for this to end, and I'm not going to be playing Echo VR anymore. But, you know, so everyone's, a lot more people are in the game, everyone has different reasons, but we hope they stick around. You know, we hope they, they get bitten by this bug that we all have gotten bit by. And Oh, okay. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a phrase. <laughs> which which bug are we? Okay, yeah. <laughs> and they stick with the game, but, you know, only time will tell. Uh, but. I think they will. Uh, 
Echo's been a lot around a lot longer than any virus, and it's 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 survived the last three years through it all. So, for a good reason, people are going to stick around. I believe. Well, Palador has uh, his faith, and I definitely look forward to it. And you have any predictions, yeah. Sneaky? Oh, it'll go big. I trust. There's there's too much going into it where it's not going to succeed. Should I avoid that skinny question? Uh, what skinny question? You should avoid skinny at every oh. opportunity at all costs, just in general. Skinny. Hi, skinny. Because I've never done it before. There's your answer, skinny. Skinny, uh, putting him on the spot on the stream. But, Classic. But surely as time goes by, you'll develop these skills. I mean, it's your... This is my first stream package. It's okay. You know, we all got to start somewhere. It's okay. It only took Skinny three weeks to figure out authentication. <laughs> so he throws it right back Wrecked, at you, I think. Skinny. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as we're nearing the end of the show, <laughs> and Skinny says that is record time. So we've shown off, you know, your flight picks. We've shown off, it, we've shown off uh, the replay viewer. You know, we've seen the awesome Cessna 172. And we've seen the awesome Macarena <laughs> video. So a lot of content from Sneaky, a lot of stuff you're doing, and it's great to see that. And Palador definitely will always love having you on the show. You're, you're one of the biggest influences in this community, and you really you know, drive the direction of our competitive scene. And everything that really has happened has, has been through your guidance and leadership, and the community has benefited greatly from that. But, you know, does anyone I want to say I appreciate it. I just... I, I, I... I do want to say something because I have a hard time. I appreciate it, but I, I don't like taking compliments. It makes me feel funny. No, uh, I, yeah, it's, it's definitely, like I always say, it's mutual, right? It's, it's not just me doing it. Uh, I do a lot of things, but it's not, I get something out of it too, you know? Um, it keeps, like I said, it keeps me, keeps me straight. That's been Echo in general, not just VRML, but just Echo as a whole. It really keeps my, my, my head and my intentions like in line with where I want to go in life, you know, uh, with, without it, I, my direction is pretty fuzzy at times. So once Echo came along and then whether it was, you know, competing uh, with Eclipse and, and going to lands or then doing pizza league casting, then uh, going to VRML and doing casting and now, um, be, being on the board there, it's just, it's been, it's like opportunity after opportunity that just leads me continually in the same direction so it's uh it's definitely something i get I get good or i get good things out of it as well is what i'm trying to say and on that note i do want to plug to the fact that we do have our uh, moderator applications open as well as casting applications open so uh you can check those links on the discord league announcements channel uh for anyone from like moderation for instance you're you're there to you essentially have to know the rules and and whatnot, but just you're there to answer questions, uh, clarify rules, help with organizing uh, events and teams and things like that. Uh, for the casting end of things, it's kind of self-explanatory: casting and or cameraman uh, and streaming things like that. You don't need experience, which is another big thing. As long as you have hardware capable of running the um, Echo and spectator mode, so you can actually get in and you have a decent mic, things like that. I mean, you don't need to be experienced in, in casting because the majority of our casters are not so or, or they weren't prior to uh, to vrml and prior to echo so uh you know we we collaborate you know i personally help people teach and, and learn and do practice with them off stream things like that like we can integrate new casters in a way that's low pressure uh, and you're not going to just be thrown into the fire solo casting on channel one so just keep that in mind and definitely go apply uh, for casting and mod ship. especially casting. It's not been a lot of applicants as of yet. I must say, get in there. <laughs> so, with that being said, do you have anything to end with, Sneaky? Um, I know you you pinned in the group chat gorilla tag. Yeah. I don't know if oh, you yes. want to talk about. Yeah, that. I was gonna wait to, uh, for you to say your final thing, but you know, thank you for uh, reminding me because I wanted to show off Lemming. Uh, former two-time world champion alongside Palador on uh, the former team Eclipse. So he's been working on his own game that I would love to show off, and it's incredibly fun. I have a clip from Kaznaz. Kaznaz is probably one of the strongest players so far. 
and we're going to cut to it and so it's called gorilla tag and it's this intuitive game where you're moving around with your arms and you can see just how skillful it is how? you can hear cj so see jason in the back oh saying how is he God, so good so good <laughs> I do there was speed. a reason for it, but the re the reason is rude. But really, an impressive Ooh, game, and I'll down, so post the uh, Discord link him. to join the the Discord server for a Gorilla Tag. No, no! But, <laughs> you know, so good. everyone's working on their own stuff. Everyone's creating, and it's it's really gonna be an impressive game, and it's it's a, totally a lot of fun. So. I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. I want to thank Zenith. I want to thank C. Jason for the bits. Uh, I really appreciate it. I so Sorry I couldn't cheer it out or call you out when you did it. Um, but I'm thankful for it, and I'm thankful for Palador, and I'm thankful for Sneaky Evil for joining us tonight. And Zenith, again, thank you for the 50 bits. And C. Jason, thank you for putting the Discord link in the chat. So I know we said our final things before. You guys got anything different to say? Or should I end this? All right. Well, I'm 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 pretty good. All right. Well, yeah, except, everyone is good. Except season two coming soon. Tomorrow. Season two coming tomorrow. soon. Sign up for the casters <laughs> applications. Tomorrow. We are looking. I am so thank. I am so thankful. Yeah. Maybe I should have used a different word. But thanks, guys, for joining us. Thank you for tuning in, and have a great night.